Hi, I'm Judy Sarden, author of Sarden's Practical Guide, How to Start Homeschooling. And I thought I would start a series on how I homeschool to help people who are thinking about homeschooling just to give you an idea of what it's like. And for those of you who are currently homeschooling and you're looking for some ideas, this is it. So, why am I sitting on my bed right now? This is an example of how I homeschool. For the last couple of days, the kids and I have been doing lessons right here, sitting on my bed. I usually have my computer in my lap. It's plugged up right here on my power strip. And the kids will sit here on the bed, basically wherever I am, they go. So do we have a homeschool room? Yes, we do. But we kind of rarely use it. It has all of our stuff in it. It has bookshelves. It has some little desks that are way too small for them at this point. And it has posters. It has my two printers. It has a lot of stuff. It's a really small room. And once you kind of have all the stuff in there, it feels kind of claustrophobic. So we don't really use that to homeschool most of the time. All of our homeschool junk is in there, but we don't really use it to homeschool. And the, right now the kitchen table is piled up with stuff. So right now it just feels good to be in here. The fan is on and it's nice, comfortable. And so this is where we are. So. Today, I want to talk to you about history. Here's what I do for history. Now, I don't do history every day. I try to do it once a week, and this is why. Because the way I do history, which is not something I recommend for everybody, but the way that I do history is extremely time consuming. So one of the things that I, I use, the, I kind of usually use, loosely use, the classical method of homeschooling. And so one of the storied books from the classical education is Story of the World. And it's I think it's backwards on there, but it's Story of the World. And the reason why I use Story of the World is because it's one of the, it's really the only history spine, and I'll explain that word in a second. It's the only history spine that I found that covers history that's not just European history. So they really do make an attempt to cover, they, they cover blocks of time. So if you're not familiar with it, it covers blocks of time. So there are four books. There's ancient, there's middle ages, there's, um, I can't remember what the third one is, but then the next one is modern times. So if there are four books and you go through each one, so it's a block of time and it attempts to cover kind of everything that was going on in the world during a block of time. So instead of studying this civilization, which is typically the Roman civilization and then the Greek civilization and, and Egypt, and now you're done with ancient times, it attempts to cover what was going on in Africa, China, India, Mesoamerica, in addition to Europe. So I like that it touches on, and it touches, but it does touch on everything that's going on in the world during a particular, during a particular part of time. A period of time and so we have a timeline that I bought from the Pandia Press that I use for the kids to write stuff down so as we're picking up things even outside of our formal history we can kind of plug it into the timeline and then we can kind of it kind of helps us to place when everything happened as we're learning history so I use story of the world okay phone call came in I'm back so I use story of the world for my history spine. And what I mean by history spine is this is the book that I use kind of as a springboard for our total history study. So it kind of, it keeps me on track. It makes it, it makes it so that if I just can't get to all this other stuff I'm going to tell you about, then we, at least we got history done. And so, but it's, it's a spine. So I don't just stay within here. I just kind of use it as a, as a guide, if you will, to history. So right now we are studying the Middle Ages. And so this book, I like it because it tells history from a story. It's entitled Story of the World, and it tells history like a story. And it, when it's talking about culture and things like that, it typically weaves it into a story as opposed to just a list of factual information. And if, for my kids, my kids are going to fifth and going to seventh. And so for them, it helps them to remember because 
they can remember a character that went through things and it, it brings in uh, this it brings in obviously factual information it tells make it illustrates things by telling short stories it brings in some of the cultural references it talks about Beowulf well, we just finished talking about the Celts and it talks about Beowulf and some other things some other legends that would have been talked about during the times and so I like it because it's interesting at the bottom, bottom line is interesting so what I do is I use the story of the world so I read the chapters and the chapters these chapters are a bit longer than they were in the ancient history book I believe but the chapters are maybe I don't know no more than 10 pages no more than 10 pages and it's like it's like a novel almost so it's just kind of straight text I read it out loud if you want your kid to read it themselves and you can discuss it later, that's fine. But since I have two kids of different ages, I do history together. So I read it out loud. So then I have also this activity book. Interestingly, the activity book really helps you to use this curriculum with multiple ages. My 10 year old daughter, loves they have lots of activity pages here in the back they have coloring pages and they have map work so if you can see the map work so for each chapter you have a section in the front for the teacher it tells you about cross references so I have one of the books that they cross reference so we can read this black and white 10 or few pa fewer pages lesson here and it's not really a lesson it's just information and then we can go here to this beautiful encyclopedia and look at the pages in this book that are cross-referenced in the activity book so it tells you it gives you there a couple of books they have a kingfisher and two kingfisher books and two usborn books history books that they cross-reference to you know you could do you could spend a whole day just talking about where they cross-referenced you to and we typically will sit, we'll read, we'll read this, I'll ask them questions while we're reading, we'll do the cross-referenced book, and then I'll sit here, and in this activity book, it gives you questions to ask. So if you are doing classical, if you want to do narration exercises, you can. You could probably turn some of this into copy work exercises, and there are lots of review questions that are open-ended, and they give you the answers to expect from the children and they're always complete sentences, answers. And so for each section of this book's chapter, so the chapters are typically broken, into, broken up into a couple of sections. So for each section, it has narration exercises and it has review questions that you can ask verbally. Then it has additional reading. So if you want to, if you have an older child and you want to assign some living hit, living books, so that's kind of bringing in a, a Charlotte Mason aspect where you're not just reading kind of a textbook, but you're also reading living books that talk about this period of time that you're studying today. So if you have older kids, you can assign them some of the additional reading, some of the living books. They have literature suggestions, and this is for each chapter. And then they have map work, they have map work section, and then they have project section. So this, I just opened this. So here's an activity project, a Viking funeral. And then you're going to, after having read, you're gonna conduct your own Viking funeral. And it kind of gives you information on how to do that. Here's a craft project. If you're into crafts, I am not. We never do the craft projects because, yeah, I just can't. And so this one has two, three craft projects. And then it has a cooking project. So you can bring in the food. We have done a couple of the cooking projects because the kids like to cook and it's always fun. So I love the activity book. You don't have to buy it, but for me, it just makes stud using Story of the World so much more engaging for the children. So, and like I said, so each chapter brings in, you have map work for younger kids who like to do coloring uh, pages. There are all kinds of activities in the back. And what you do, these pages are perforated, so you can just, if you have multiple kids for the map work or for some of the coloring work, you can just rip the page out and make a photocopy of it. So if you're homeschooling, 
you probably do have a photocopier that makes, um, you have a printer that makes photocopies. If you're not yet homeschooling, that is like a requirement of all homeschoolers to have a printer and a printer that actually makes photocopies. So I use those. So those are the things that I use with the story of the world. Now, because in, I'll talk about creating a, a black history thing. We're African American, we're black. And so for me, I do not want the only history that my kids get of black history to be enslavement in the Americas. So I am really big on bringing in outside resources. As we study each block of history, I'm really big on bringing in African history. So we brought in ancient history as we did ancient history. There are a couple of really good uh, documentaries that you can use for that, but I'll cover that in another video. So right now I have this book it's entitled When We Ruled. I got this off of Amazon and it's like $35. It's kind of expensive, but it is an excellent book. Excellent book. And with this book, see, I've tabbed what we're going to talk about the next time. So this takes a lot of work, guys. I'm extra, okay? I'm extra. Don't even think that you have to do this for history. History takes us about three hours to get through every time we do a, a chapter. And so that's why I do it maybe once a week. Sometimes it's once every two weeks. But it's so rich. We get so much information. We have so much discussion that I'm okay with taking history super slow because I love bringing all this stuff. I hated history growing up. My kids love it. And it's just because we approach it in such a different way. I don't require them to memorize dates and names. They just memorize, they learn overall concepts of creating their um, their history timeline. And I, they're getting so much more out of history than I ever got in elementary, high, or college. So, so here I have tabbed here in this book they're talking about the civilization of the Moors. So we're about to get into talking about the Moors in this in story of the world. So this is a different perspective. So this is a this book was written by an African American professor, and he has covered African history in ancient and Middle Ages. And so it's a this is my resource for African history in the ancient and Middle Ages. So I will flip through here as we're studying things in Story of the World. I'll flip through here. I'll also, I'll also run down, we run down a ton of rabbit holes. For example, when we're studying Constantinople, um, I don't have my iPad, my daughter has it right now, but when we we're studying Constantinople, every time we study a place, we find it current day on Google Earth. That's the other thing I use. We're always finding things on Google Earth. And so, like we just learned about the uh, Hagia Sophia, which is the huge church slash turned mosque, now museum, now it looks like it's about to turn back into a mosque again, in formerly Constantinople, which is now Istanbul. And so it was built in 537, and the thing is still standing today, which is amazing. But when they talked about it in Story of the World, we looked it up on Google Earth. And so we do that, so we bring in Google Earth, and we're always looking at modern day, whatever civilization where we look at modern day and see what the people there look like today and kind of see how the culture has changed or how much how different it's still how different it is or how it's still the same and so history takes forever the way I do it like I said I don't recommend it for everybody you really have to have a lot of time to do history this way I don't do a whole lot of planning other than flipping through the when we ruled book to find the corresponding African history. That's the only really thing that I do outside because it's it's laid out for you so easily in the Story of the World book. So to summarize, if you just want to use this book, you can totally do it. Oh, also I have a test booklet, which I, I forgot to bring with me. So I have a test booklet that goes with this where it's kind of the typical school, multiple choice, fill in the blank, kind of true false kind of thing. And so I will have the kids do that as well as part of the, the overall history, just so they can get some experience taking tests because we don't really do tests. But you don't have to have that. You don't have to have anything but this book here. If you just want to get history done, and sometimes if we're getting really behind, I actually I haven't opened it yet because we haven't gotten too far in the book yet, but with the ancient history, I totally used it. 
I have the CDs. So we're about to start taking some long road trips and we will totally listen to this in the car and I'll have my husband read, because I usually drive, I'll have my husband read out the questions in the review book, I mean in the activity book, and in the test booklet. So we'll listen, we'll discuss what we heard, and then he'll read it out, he'll read out the questions, and that's done. And so on those days, we just don't get to this, and we just don't get to this, and we just don't get to, to the Google Earth, we don't get to all that extra stuff. But when we do have time, this is kind of how I do it. So if you're new to homeschooling, you can see how flexible it is and how flexible it can be. You can spend a little bit of time just to check off the box and say, I got it done. Or you can spend a whole lot of time and make a huge, totally enriching, you know, one or two day project of just history. On days we do history, we typically only have time to do the absolute necessaries, which are math and uh, reading. And then I have online Spanish that they do. And so on those days, on history days, because history takes up so much time, we will just do those things and I don't worry about anything else. So that's how I do history. And I'll be posting more of these. So make sure you look out for them. And I hope this was helpful. For more videos, check me out at How to Homeschool on Facebook. If you are brand new to homeschool, if you are thinking about homeschooling, check me out on there. If you have questions, you can post. I will answer them personally. So I hope to see you then. Talk to you later.